He punches the clock in the face. He staggers from his head with his hands on his head. He tears off a stalk of celery. He saves the dog for revenge. He glares at the paper. He's Mr. Congeniality himself, Mr. Breakfast. Here's Barry. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Barry. And as I've said before, I'm Barry. You're not. How you doing with the strike? We got problems. We got a heartburn out there in the city. Are you thirsty? You need a coolie? We got it made. We can go to Hull. We can go to Quebec. Other people in Ontario, they're burnt. They got no luck. But it's amazing that it took a beer strike for us to really appreciate Quebec. This is totally amazing. The government says they want to bring in American beer. Personally, I can't wait. Can you imagine going to a bar, slug back 20 or 30 Michelobes and spend half the night in the bathroom? Speaking of graffiti, did you hear the latest one? Uh, it's Jesus Saves, but Gretzky Gets the Rebound. Showtime at the Casbah. The post office, they've got heartburn. They've got, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're talking strikes over there. I know one demand that the inside workers want. They want more Valium. I could relate to it. Management, they want to change the job application. They want to change it so it reads, um, yeah, it reads like this. Do you know enough to come in out of the rain? Now, if you answer no, you got the job. Right. Talk, uh, the talks are, are going slow because right now the union has told us members to mail in their, their strike votes. goes from there. The, 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 some things they want to do, uh, management, they, they're always arguing. They're going crazy. They, they said, let's not argue about money. The union said, we want a 10% pay increase. Management says, let's argue, and they did and still are. Uh, management wants to put a quota system down, something like a dog a day. I don't know. They'll work it out from there. But they do have a, a good positive uh, vein here. They're offering home study courses for uh, for the employees. And the situation is that, number one, there's going to be the 10-yard mail toss. Very interesting. Um, uh, how not to be seen after 2 o'clock. Very helpful. The uh, slot bashing is very, very popular. And one that the, post, uh, the postal carriers are going to be happy with, and that's going to be the dog do shuffle. <laughs> and look, at one group that never goes on strike is the city employees. You know, they don't need to go on strike. And if they ever did go on strike, it would be a sit-down strike at best. They, uh, I get a kick out of them. They, you know, it takes 12, they send 12 people out to check a fire hydrant. I don't really understand that. You know the old thing, if you carry a, a clipboard around, It'll make you look busy. Well, these guys carry shovels, not to look busy. This inspirational album by the Winnebago Choir, with such hits as Brush Your Dentures, Ruby, We Got Company Coming, and The Immortal, I've Traveled So Far, I'd Better Sit Down for a While. So get off your butts and send nine ninety nine for the Billy Bob Platter Sensation of the Week. Hello, hey, Matthew. Have you ever got so high? You got a thing? Well, I've been in that same predicament, and I know it's no fun. Now when I'm going to get high, I wear this snag-proof, combat tested, all-weather safety harness. This baby will catch you faster than the student loan program if you fall. And you'll be pleased to know it comes in several colors and sizes to fit any mood or social status. Any man says safety before happiness. Because you never know when whoa woo see what I mean? They not say so long the next time. Well, uh, a good welcome, and we're back. This is the official guest interview portion of the show. We've had a contest for a while, and this is what we call the Eric Nielsen Lookalike Contest. <laughs> Can we zoom in on that? I, we got a winner with us today. Can we see that? You got that? <laughs> Okay, now let's just take a shot of our winner over here. Yeah. I may have to take those sunglasses off, sir. Okay. Huh? What do you think? Give me the picture. This is okay. Let's okay. take it. Here. The Eric Nielsen winner. Hang him high. <laughs> of course, you people all know who this guy really. You should, anyhow. And if you don't know who this guy is, you're living in a cave. <laughs> CJSB Radio. What do you think about that, Mr. Mike? The music of your life is on in Ottawa. 
between 9 in the morning and 11 in the morning, there's a guy that does a host show, a talk show host, and this is the guy, Mr. Ed, as I like to call him, Eddie Needham. He's been, how long have you been doing this now? Uh, about a year, a year and a month at uh, CJSB. About a year and a month. Yeah. And it goes on five days a week. Wednesdays is open, ho open house time. Open so you house. You can talk yep. about anything. Yep. And the other four days are made up of other interesting topics. Good welcome, and, and good welcome to the show, as I said, Edward. Uh, it's a pleasure, Barry. You know... I said to myself, this guy, I haven't seen the show, but I asked him to come on my show. He comes on mm -hmm. like a gentleman, and I said, okay, reciprocation. Reciprocation. Amen. I don't have to pay you anything, do I? Reciprocation. <laughs> oh, that kind of guy. Good welcome. Um, you've got, okay, you, you've, got the, you've got this talk show here. Yeah. How many, when we're just on a straight vein for a second, how do you pick your topics? Like, you know, they change all the time. It's the hardest thing of the show is picking the topics. We have a meeting every day. Five of us bang our heads together. We try to decide. We try to get certain guests. Mm -hmm. If you go after a high-profile number and he shows up, then you've got a show. You've got but, a man. Yeah. But if there's a topic, we decide, is it a good topic? Will the phones ring? Right? Uh -huh. And you try not to co uh, copy the competition. You're trying to do something original. You so know, and stuff. It's very difficult to well, come up with something. Yeah. You know. When you've got, like we used to talk about the phone rings. I know I've listened to your show numerous of times. In fact... This morning's show, you said you had a hook around there this yeah, morning's show. Yeah. I had a former prostitute. A former prostitute. Yes, sir. Miss Pengy wouldn't like that at all. Look at when you've got that sort of thing, like, okay, you've got people phoning in all the time. How many lines do you have? Six. you got six lines. Yeah. On an average show, how many calls would you receive? Oh, I don't know. Given time? Uh, we fill the board most of the time. Mm -hmm. Usually the six lights are lighted for the whole show. How long the calls last can vary. It it's really hard for me to say. I've had shows where we ran through 70 or 80 calls, a mm -hmm. trivia-type show. Okay, I've yeah. had other shows where in two hours we took 13 calls mm -hmm. only because of the subject that matter. I wing it. I go on, and if somebody's getting, mm -hmm. you know, boring or repetitious, I will. Well, thank you very much. And... Uh, if there's a terrific caller on a well, this is you know this is a this is not a self admiration thing here, but I've noticed that there, I've listened to a lot of radio talk show hosts and they get abrupt and they get the people they just start cutting the people off in the middle of it all and you have an ability to sort of bring out a little bit more and it happens that a lot of people I've heard that when they're on the uh, they're on the phone talking to you they they've been in their car listening to your your show and they, and they, I, they phone, st yeah. people have probably stopped the pay phone to say something to you. They do, it? yeah. I, it's terrific. Yeah, it's flattering. Eh? Well. It's flattering. Do you get uh, many repeat callers? You know, you oh, hear the yeah. same voice yeah. all the time on various topics. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Well, you try to let them know that every single day you cannot have an opinion on, mm -hmm. you know. I have one caller who shall remain, because I don't want to irritate this caller. Regulars can help you. Yeah, this yeah. caller, if, if we're talking about ancient Persian rock formations, this caller has one. <laughs> if we're talking about abortion, this person knows about it. We're talking about the common market, this person, every day. They can't have that many opinions. So we kind of limit them, sort of work it out to take them off for the week. And anybody gets on an open house, so, you know. Well, is there is there a time delay? Like, we a lot of crazies in there. We I can have, imagine what we they have the electronic facility to eliminate the ten dirty words George mm -hmm. Carlin said you couldn't say on TV. Yeah. Number one. Yeah, yeah. We can zip them. We okay. can beep them. You can beep them all We can out. get them off the air, yeah. It's well, a bit complicated, the process, but let's put it this way. There's a six-and-a-half-second thing in there. And they can, they you can do it all from there. You, you're in control. If that's, that's, somebody that's, goes on the air, either you <coughs> allowed it or you made a mistake and forgot to cut it off. Really? And it's just... I, I, well, well, this is it. As, as, as the host, you've got to be able to, to yeah. play with it and gear it up. I but going, stuff just, go. there, there's something I do. This may take a little bit of time, and you have to bear with us. Back to the Eric Nielsen thing. Okay. Tell me that story about how you signed his autograph. Did I tell you that? Uh, no, I heard that on the radio. Oh, uh, New no, Year's this, Eve. Stay, stay with us. Okay, New Year's Eve, I'm at the Weston Hotel. Right. Tuxedo, looking... Sloppy like, Joe tonight. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> and I'm looking like a million dollars with interest, right? Tux <laughs> on, baby. And there's a lady at the table next to me, and she's had a couple. Okay. And she keeps coming over to my table. 
Eric Nielsen, I should have, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, sure, Eric. Yeah, I know you're Eric Nielsen, and I know I look a little bit like Eric Nielsen, right? <laughs> right, exactly. And uh, I act a little like him. Do it, do it. And um, you don't go, you don't travel to Germany. Any, so you anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, this lady, I, this, this lady's bugging you. She's bugging me. Okay, so go finally, on, go ahead. she comes over and she wants my autograph. Okay. okay. And I say, okay, really. And finally, I'm just to, you know, and get her. Boom, off. boom. I just signed so what her. What did you do? I signed her on. You signed Eric, Eric Nielsen. I signed Eric Nielsen, handed her back her thing. She was happy. She left me alone. That's, that's, that's wild. Wow. Came over. We have, this fellow actually admitted to fraud on TV. I love it. <laughs> that's, that's a great way to do it. Um, I've just been told that we, we got to wrap We're it up. Damn, I wish We're we had out. a half hour to talk later on. Goes. Boom. Well, look, it. all we can do is say thanks for coming down. My it's pleasure, Barry. TJSB, uh, every morning at 9 to 11, and that's 54 point. What's, what's the number? Zero. 540 on the AM dial. 540 on the AM dial. CJSB radio. We got with to <laughs> Do it, do it. <laughs> That's it. Eric Nielsen. No, it's Ed Neal, my pal Eddie. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Tired of abusing the same people? For just nineteen ninety nine, you can rent a wimp. You can scream at it, beat it, throw it around, do anything you like to it. All this for just nineteen ninety nine. So rent one now before you kill anybody else.
customary when your canary flies off with a fairy, give it nary a prayer, let alone an honorary burial. But now, when your canary has a coronary for just nineteen ninety nine, Scary Gary Canary Cemetery will bury your canary very nicely, thank you. A pollutionary disembowelment is first and foremost on our list of necessary veterinary burial duties. We have a very large selection of burial boxes for your little Tom, Dick, or Harry bird. We provide funerary eulogies. Your little yellow bird is then laid to rest at the starting point of its flight to the great canary sanctuary in the sky amidst fields of green with aviary statuary everywhere. We write obituaries. We have a very large vocabulary and a concise dictionary to aid you in your time of grief. Scary Gary's Canary Cemetery offers military burials too. Don't wait for the stationary canary dilemma. Bury your bird today. Our service is legendary in just 1999. A better. You know I'm how it is. Uh, you know how it is. Hello and welcome. It is host interview time, and as you can hear, we have an individual that we're going to bring on to the show. Uh, we've just hired him, as a matter of fact. He's come up from Hollywood, L.A., where they have two kinds of air, regular and chunky style. Funny man, this is an elected man. The like guy, his name is Matt Idol. I want you to say hello to Matt Idol. How are you doing, Matt? Not too bad. Thank you, Barry. I'm doing very fine. It's very fine today. It's a very nice day. I like it. I like it out. I like you, too. Yes. You, that's why I'm here. I am here because of you. You know that. Let me give you some background, ladies and gentlemen. Matt is going to be doing our TV and theatrical movie reviews. Matt has been... Uh, he was back in the 20s when... It's I was a star in the 20s. Movies. Movies. I was really big. Movies. I was very big then. Very big. Yeah. Then those days, a star. A star was really a star. Nowadays, these stars, they're not stars. They're just... I guess in your they're, day, nothing, they're nothing, they're nothing, they're nothing. I don't know you think about it. I don't even I don't go to movies anymore. I only watch commercials now. That's the only thing to watch. Did you ever have a problem with directors having a problem with you? Did you weren't one of those uh... No, I was very easy to work with. I was not a problem star like some stars you get there. Uh, they were always they always wanted this, they wanted that, they had private rooms, uh, chauffeurs, they wine on the set. Me, I just as long as I had uh, as long as I had my way, I was fine. I had no problems. As long as they did what I asked, they, they the director they did everything for you. Yes, they were wonderful. Well, look at, well, they knew I was a star. Can, they knew I was a star. Matt, yeah. if we can just back down for a second because hey, I think we're gonna have a real thing here. What about the, how long were you working on the National Enquirer on, on that magazine? I know you. Betty, Betty, that is a nasty rumor. That is a nasty rumor it's spread rumor? by jealous, jealous people who, when they saw that I was becoming a bigger success than they, they right away started to spread those nasty rumors. Matt, I know. But they're not I true. They are not true. I was what? never part of the National Enquirer. What about today? So I may be biased once in a while, but I don't know what's on the side. hard to get through to this guy. What, okay, now that you're going to be doing some TV interviews and some of these things, you're going to be doing some uh, critics' choices for us on Breakfast with Barry. What do you think of the new movies, the new shows that are out? Barry, I, I have nothing good to say about these new shows. They are terrible. I am. I, I wouldn't do this for, except for you. You know that. You know that. I don't. I, I don't like these movies these days. But for you, I am willing. I am willing to do the reviews. Yes, only for you. Only for you. I don't know. Okay. What, I, don't, I know I won't like them though. What I know. Do? I know I won't like them. Well, what There's we're no, going to do? They don't make films anymore. They just. They make these little movies. They're in my day when I was a star, well, we made films. Uh, I am mad. We made films for people. What I'm going to do is go to you can get your family to movie now. Review. Movies, movies. He is a rocker. We'll talk to you next week. Dad, on they're they're not like time. the old days. This is Matt, not I like the old days. Believe me, not like those old. I remember in the twenties. Was it twenty-three? No, it was twenty-four. I was I was starting with Betty Grable. Uh, Barry, Barry, where did you go, Barry? One dark and moonlit night, a traveler became confronted with a situation of devastating proportions. The wind was howling, and the moon was ghoulishly glowing full. The traveler had lost his way, and was becoming increasingly perplexed. The moonlight, gleaming through the trees, cast giant, unworldly shadows. The cracking, dead, drying leaves of autumn contemplated their dread upon those who dared to cross their path. Imprisoned by these suspicions, the traveler became increasingly aware that things were not showing themselves for what they were. Then, suddenly, a monstrous animal-like figure sprung out from behind the trees. Stricken by an onslaught of fear, the traveler began to run. He ran, and he ran as fast as he could. But where, where was he running to? The desperation of his plight became more apparent. He was no longer among the living. Are you ready to 
How you doing? Arr, I'm Captain Dayliner. How you doing? Arr, this is my buddy, Billy. How you doing, Billy? Oh, good, Captain Dayliner. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. You know, I got my friend Polly here. Polly? Polly. Polly who? Polly. Polly, my bird. Polly, my hey, bird. bird. Arr, Polly, how you doing? Want a doobie? Arr, Polly says no. Polly, want a cracker? Here, Polly. Take off. Polly. Oh, ah, flying away. Oh, no. What are you going to do about that, Billy? Arr, Arr, sir, please. Sure, you want another story? Way. I'll tell you another story. What, which one should I tell you today, Billy? Should we talk to you about... Let's talk about South Africa. Arr. South Africa, like North Africa, but... <coughs> Somewhere in the vicinity, Billy. It was awful. You want to hear about that one? Oh, yeah. Please tell me. Please tell Here's me. Here's what happened, Billy. We were in the heart, heart of Diamond Land. Arr, I can like see you put in the ring there. Zebras all over the place. And we we're about 20 feet, 40 feet right offshore. We we're in the Brigantine. Do not, do not. Did it's you see any swimming elephants? Lots of them, Billy. You know why they got the long noses? No. So they think they can still breathe. You know, they got it made. Those things, God made them right. They do they swim things. with their ears? No, 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 no. They just go along. It's just like a submarine. You see this little thing going down the water. Arr, it's a sight to behold. Oh, Billy. No, I want to know about those after. Come on, come on, <coughs> tell me. Tell okay, me. We're, we're sailing out there. We had to bring in a big load. We had big what load kind of boat did you have? We had a big one. Big one. It was an awful one. But it was a big one. We had people. We had 25 crew on board. What it was a three master. The, the boat was red. Can you imagine a red boat in... No, it wasn't China. A red boat in Africa. Arr. No, South Africa. That too. We were there too, Billy. But what happened was, all of a sudden, a squall came up. Oh, have you ever been in a squall, Billy? A squall. A squall. A squall. It feels like this. There's water all over the place. There's water all over the place. It won't like that. Squalls are big. It came up quick. It came up fast. It was a blower. Ah, it was awful, Billy. But, 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 but what, what day was it? <coughs> it might have been a Monday or a Tuesday. I don't know. We're in the dateline situation here. You know, you go back hours and hours. Oh, Arr, no, really, no. no. What day? It was awful. Okay, what day? A Tuesday. If you're okay. in Japan, that must have been Wednesday. But anyhow, we were doing. We had a load. They came out. They rode the whole what, load what, up there. What, what load was it? Billy, you're getting on my nerves. You want to hear the story or not? Yeah, I want to hear the story. Billy, here, go write a letter. Oh, write a letter. Just the Billy. I'm trying to tell you a story here. So anyhow, good man, good man. Here's what happens. Okay. All of a sudden, we got loaded, and here we are, going back across the ocean. We're in you got loaded ocean. like Trump, sir. No, no, loaded full. We did that the night before. Oh. Arr. Do, 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 do. do. Oh, a few, a few. But we didn't bring them on board, Billy. You know why? Why not? Because we're not like that. Oh, Arr. yeah, you told me that before. You're not allowed girls on boats because... <coughs> well, That's right, Billy. Know. You're doing good, Billy. That's right. And I told you that story. You never forget that. So story. tell me Arr. the story, So here we go. You're interrupting me, Billy. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Billy, here. Why don't you go make a sandwich? Make a couple sandwiches. You're hungry? Make a whole load of sandwiches, Billy. Billy. Sorry. I'm getting pretty upset at this guy. Look at Billy. Arr. Arr. Look at We're coming back. We're in the southern Atlantic Ocean. The Which ship was full. You you? Billy, you're getting on my nerves. You're getting on my nerves, yeah, Billy. Now, you want to hear the, the story or yeah, not? Yeah, Arr. Yeah, yeah. You're making me mad, Billy. Well, with the moon out? The moon was full, Billy. You know, and every time, you know what happens when the moon's full? People go crazy. Ah! Ah! Good morning, and welcome to the breakfast crowd here at Breakfast with Barry. It sounds like we do, and looks like we do have a very interesting crowd today. Let's talk to a few of these people. Um, how, how are you today? All fine. And, and, and what is your name? Chris. Chris, uh, do you think we have a good normal crowd here today? Normal? Yeah. What do you mean normal? Well, a normal crowd of sorts. Hmm, I don't know. Well, do you feel you're very normal? Yes, I'm normal. Well, what are you doing talking to my thumb? <laughs> oh, no, no, another groaner. <laughs> we could take this even worse. We have... Who, okay, thank you. They're not throwing stones as of yet. A good day. And your name is? Tata. Tata. Okay, we have something. Tata, I have... Do you, are you betting? Do you like to be a betting person? Sure. Okay, I have a dollar bill right here in my hand, and I bet that... I'm a bit of a magician at, at, at heart. I bet that I can kiss you without even touching you. Now, this is... 
You know, Henning doesn't even do this stuff, but I, I bet you a dollar I can do it. Okay, try. Okay. Are we ready for this? This is... We don't need to dim the lights or anything? Okay. For a dollar. We're getting ready for it? You've got to get ready for it. Oh, oh, oh what a shame I lost the dollar. Oh, oh, isn't that, Jackie? Well, good. I'm glad. <laughs> Look, oh, that was bad. But what we'll do is I have a $5 bet that I'll talk to you about after the show, okay? Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Anything else? We have, who else do we have here? Oh, we pick you. Okay, and what is your name? Dee Dee. Dee Dee, and what are you doing down here at the breakfast crowd well, today? I came to see you today, Barry. Oh, you did? Yeah, I got in. I finally got into the show. I mean, I've been waiting in line for three days to get tickets. And I finally got in to see you. We have dedication. You're, like, uh, involved in the fan club, I heard, uh, later, earlier today? Yes, yes, I'm president of the Barry Fan Club. Breakfast, breakfast, breakfast. Oh, hey, listen, Chow is on her mind. If you could just come out here and stand down here for a second. There's something on the back of your coat that I would like. Did you see this? I, can, we, can we get a good, get a good shot of this? Well, great. We do, we do have a breakfast believer. Uh, this is... You're obviously, you sent in a long time ago to get your membership into the breakfast crowd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're keeping the faith alive. You're frying your eggs and not flipping them over, I hope. That's right. Keep them up and smiling. That's great. Well, listen, Didi, it was good talking to you. I kind of like having a fan yeah. club. If anybody else wants to write in, uh, send money if you can in the envelope. That would make it a little bit more livable. And uh, we'll just go, go, go. Well, thank you very much. I've been told that it's time to cut this down. Thank you very much for coming down, people, from the breakfast crowd again. We'll talk to you later. It's time to go? Okay, bye.